variables are used constantly in video games, with the most obvious example being for the player's health, where if the player gets hurt, you subtract that damage from their health. So their health is a number that varies, or a variable. In GDevelop, there are five different types of variables, text, number, boolean, array, and structure. And in this video we're only going to cover text, number, and boolean, and we'll cover the next two in a later video. Now on top of the five different types of variables, there's also five different variable scopes. Global, Scene, Local, Object, and Instance. So let's start with a very basic number variable. If I preview this game, you can see the character runs around, and when I run into the gems, they get deleted, but the gem number doesn't go up. So let's change it so that it does. So in order to add a variable to my game, I need to declare it. And I can do that by opening the scene variable panel, which I can get to by going through here, or with this button here. From the properties I can go to scene variables. Now in the scene variable panel, I can add a variable, and then I'll name it score. And then, I can pick the kind of variable that I want, and in this case I'm just going to leave it as a number variable, and I'll leave it at zero. Then, I can go to the event sheet, where when the player is in collision with the object, it deletes the object. So we want to add in two different actions, one to change the variable, and one to change the text. So to begin with, I'll look up variable, and there are two different basic actions for variable. Change variable value, which works for global, scene, and local variables, and then change variable value for objects. So since we're working with a scene variable, I'm going to open this one. And you can already see the score variable that we added is there. And you can see right here the icon for scene, telling you that this is a scene variable, and number. So I know the score variable is a number scene variable. So I can select that and change the modification sign to add and 1. So now, when the player collides with the object, we delete the object and add 1 to the score variable. Then, we want to change the text of the text object gems, which is this text object here, and we want to change that to quotation gem plus, which you can use to combine text inside the quotations with a variable, score, which is the variable that we just made. If I start to type in score, I'll be shown the variable that I want to use. And there we go. So now when I preview the game, we'll delete the object, add one to the score variable, and then show that score variable on screen. And now that we have that set up, you might actually realize that you want your score to go between different scenes. So if you have a level 1 and a level 2, and you want your character to be able to go from one level to the next and carry that score with them, a scene variable isn't going to work. Because a scene variable only exists as long as you're in that scene. So if you go from one scene to the next, that variable gets erased. So in that case, you'll actually want to use a global variable. Because a global variable applies to all scenes in your game. So in the project manager, you can go to global variables, and just like scene variables, you can add a variable, and this time we're going to call this global score instead of just score. And again, we'll leave it as a number and zero, and press apply. Now, with this change variable action, you'll actually see the global variable show up as an option in the drop down menu. You can see again the icons, global and number. So it's a number global variable. And if I click on that, this action works with that global variable. If you click here, now that it's a global variable instead of a scene variable, we'll open up the global variable side of the panel. And I can switch back and forth from scene to global variables when editing variables from the action. And then we can press OK. Now, we want to use the global variable instead of the score variable. So now the text will read gems and that global variable instead. Now in the second scene, we still haven't added those actions, so I'll copy those over. Then, we'll make the text action happen at the beginning of scene, along with when we run into the coins. So in scene 1, if I run into all the gems, I'll be set to scene 2, 
and that global score variable will keep the number from level 1 to level 2. Now let's talk about a new type of variable. So this is an instance of the enemy object. So if I go to the enemy object, I can go to its variables and add a variable for direction. And I'll make that one into a boolean variable, which are variables that are used kind of like light switches. They can be either true or false, so on or off. So I can set the direction of the boolean variable to true on the object, but this is an instance. So by default, it will have that as its variables. But if I go to the properties panel, down here you'll see instance variables, and I can change this to actually be false instead. So now, this instance of this object has its direction variable changed to false. And if I copied that, I could set this one to true, and so each one would be different. So what I want to do with this boolean variable is make it so that the enemy goes back and forth when it runs into these posts. So I'll go to the event sheet, and in this section I have made here, I'm going to add the condition for the variable value of the object, and I'll select enemy as the object, and right now this is set up for a number variable. But if in variable I select the boolean, it changes to the true false selection for boolean variables. So these conditions are if it's true or if it's false. And then we'll use forces to make the enemy move. So we'll add a force to the enemy object with 0 in the y direction and 50 in the x direction. And then we'll do the opposite for the other side by making it a negative. So now if the boolean is changed to true, they'll move at a force of 50 pixels per second to the right along the x-axis. And if it's false, they'll move at 50 pixels per second to the left on the x-axis. And then we'll add conditions for collision with the left or right signpost. And then we'll add actions to change that boolean variable from true to false or false to true when they run into these signposts. So now if I preview the game, you'll see the enemy going back and forth when they run to the signpost because it goes from true to false to true to false. So we've shown number variables and boolean variables. Let's quickly show off text variables, which can also be called strings. And the quickest way to do that is to swap out this boolean variable for a text variable. So if I go to the object and go to variables, I can change this boolean variable to a text variable and set it as right. So now instead of true and false, we're going to go with left and right. But because we already changed this instance's variable to false and made it specific to this instance, in its instance variables, it still thinks that direction is false. The simplest thing to do is to just reset this variable. And there we go. So now in the event sheet, these no longer work because they're looking for text instead of a boolean. So if we go into it, we need to set the modifier and we'll set it to equal and right. So now, if the direction of the enemy is equal to right, it will go to the right. And conversely, if it's equal to left, it will go to the left. And so we need to change these variables as well. And just to really hammer home how this works, let's create an event without a condition and have the text set to the text variable of this object. So to do that, we need to type in enemy, so the enemy object, and then dot, and then you'll see the direction variable in the list. So it's enemy dot direction. And you can see it changing from right to left to right to left. Now the last thing with text variables is that when you're setting something to text, it needs to be in quotations, because otherwise it won't work. And now the last scope of variable is local. Let's make a new section for it, and I'll show you how to use it. So if you right click on an event, you can go to add, 
And then among the other types of events you can add, there's local variable. If you click on that, you'll be given the local variable window. I'm going to use it in this example to just randomly spawn objects. That local variable attached itself to the event that I added the local variable to. Unlike all of the other kinds of variables, local variables aren't saved from frame to frame. So whatever happens to this variable in this frame is forgotten by the time the next frame comes. So now I can set this local variable to random in range 0 to 3. I can add four different sub-events with the condition for the value of that variable. So if it equals 0, 1, 2, or 3, then I'll just create an object at the position of the cursor with cursor X and cursor Y. And I'll just pick four random objects. And then add a condition for if the mouse button is released. And now I'm creating random objects whenever I click. And the reason you would do it this way is because local variables don't show up in the declared list in any action that isn't a sub-event of that local variable. So you can make a bunch of local variables and it won't fill up your declared list and will only affect the portion of events that are set up as sub-events below the one the local variable is declared in. So this local variable works here because it's below the event, but it wouldn't work here because it's not a sub-event of where the local variable is declared. You can access this local variable by double-clicking on it, and you can add as many local variables as you want to inside that block. We're going to cover arrays and structures and some other ways to use variables in future videos, but for now, be sure to click on one of these.